this is going to be it. Better feelings than last time. Oh. <laughs> you like that? Power of, power of friendship. The friendship compels you. Oh, oh, I see myself. All right, let's see if I stay on. I don't know why I have my headphones on. I can't hear anything. All right, I'm going to just give this 10 seconds and see if I stay on. Dance to music I actually don't have on. Seems stable. We're good. All right, let's just go ahead and start. Uh, clearly, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, lots going on. Literally, a lot is going on, just like I was saying last week. Uh, so what I want to do is talk to you about, guys about what's going on right now. Let me just pull this doc to the side where I made some notes, because there's a lot of changes that have gone in and changes that are going in. Let me make sure I'm all... Oh, I don't want to show you that. And then we'll do this. All right, so you guys should see the patcher, and I've got my tidings. Great. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go over uh, what's been going on and uh, what we're doing right now. And some of those things are starting to merge together, so I figured I'd just kind of go down a list, um, show you some of the things that are going in that are more specifically affecting the artwork flow, which I'm really just focused on right now. Um, so I'm actually going to pull Ben over because last week we actually got the ability... Oh, I really do this a lot. I'm suddenly realizing that. I'm going to hold this mug. Uh, last week we actually got the uh, ability importer in and Ben has been uh, diligently working on the next phase of getting uh, classes in. Yes. So Ben, what are you working on? Um, right now I'm primarily working on getting the Black Knight abilities in. He's Black got Knight. all of his uh, weapons because weapons are kind of shared between everybody because everybody can use all the weapons. Uh, but then he has a bunch of his uh, specific weapon styles. So those, uh, all the data got in for all of the components and then those are getting specific logic trees. So those are theoretically all set up and I'm trying to test them but then uh, somehow the editor crashed my machine. So we're going to see if we can get some testing in for the, the Black Knight and see if all that stuff works. And if that goes reasonably well, we'll move on and get some other classes, their, uh, their weapon uh, styles and see what else we can get in. So, so basically what we're doing, the short takeaway of that is we're doing a whole lot of tech to get the abilities in and now we're actually setting up how the ability work. Yeah, this is actually getting the content, like the actual buttons that players will push to make things happen into the game. Now that doesn't mean we have the new animation system hooked up, or the sounds, or the VFX, or any of that, but the data at least will be there. And then as those new systems get hooked up, it should just work. Because if the logic is already sound and the data should, is already there, then... I'm going to do this should being the operative word. Yeah. Um, so basically as we're doing a whole bunch of new tech, uh, we've given Ben basically bull he's got his own engineer to I, I, whenever there's a, an issue of what bull should be doing or who she he should be helping i always tell him help ben ben's your customer right now but he's um, just on the tools side i'm also yeah. bothering tim and i'm also bothering brian so there's a lot of people actually. so what's actually happening is we're building all the different abilities um, and some of the tech to do different things with the abilities mm -hmm. so he'll run into a wall and be like okay well i need to you know have a groups or I need to put down, we talked about um, deployables the other day. Yeah, we need uh, to be like, able to deploy things. The stone healer needs to put a rock on the ground. How do we do that? So I don't know. Somebody has it. An earlier stream we had John uh, uh, doing uh, rocks and the whole point of those is that the stone healer can put this thing down and then it has to uh, do an area of effect on not just one guy but multiple guys within that area of effect. And that's a lot of things that, you know, until you're actually seeing a bunch of people making this, you take for granted that that actually exists in any kind of a game. But just figuring all of that out is just another component on top of our ability system. Just doing an area of effect is easy, but then having an object placed in the world that actually does that area of effect such that if you destroy the object, the area of effect goes away is kind of different. So there's more pieces in there that have to get so, hooked up. So a little more complex in that we have health on the object, players can target it, and then we also need to make sure from like our, our couple of notes for John that players can tell the difference between different things that are dropped on the ground. Yeah, so they all look distinct and you can tell what each one is. Um, so basically you're just in class data hell right now. Well, it's not data primarily, it's actually <coughs> logic, so it's more like scripting, it's more like logic how what happens when this happens when this happens this happens and this needs to perform this action in this way in these conditions and stuff like that the data the actual variables and all the information is all in there already it's just a matter of saying okay well we have an amount of damage 
when should this damage happen? Oh, it should happen when the attack happens, or it should happen after an amount of time, or it should happen and it should get a bonus under the conditions that you're behind the person, all of yeah, these things. Yeah, ben, ben, actually, earlier today, I, I, I'm working in the terrain editor, wrapping my head around that, and kind of new parts of the terrain editor, and I walked over and looked over Ben's shoulder, and he had, <laughs> he had three windows open of, like, all these different things, and I was like, well, this just makes what I'm doing child's play. Um, so anyway, we're working on classes, uh, getting classes in. One of the parts of classes is the archers. Andrew's been working on, um, last week I talked about how um, I'm actually going to start going on to other things. So if you well, want to if you want to roll back, back to your data like trees, um, so one of the things that Andrew was working on was um, uh, visual uh, targeting. So you could actually see like a a line of a really simple UI for uh, dropping fireballs <laughs> in this case, and we'll hook that up to the archers. And now we have that hooked up so that the client actually understands uh, ability stats. So all your abilities will actually change. Uh, your targeting reticule and what actually happens when you fire. So that's one of the things that he's working on. Um, we have uh, a lot of stuff going on with building plots right now and buildings in general. Um, one of our key things that we're focused on is big battles and lots of destruction and full destructibility and full physics on the castles. So uh, last week I was talking about we had about 2,500 buildings in a test and we're looking at two different things, the quantity of buildings and the size of buildings. And the 2,500 was clearly quantity. Um, so we've got, we've, I think, hey, Rob, how many blocks did our uh, 2,500 uh, buildings represent? 50 million blocks. That's it. Um, maybe 48 million. So. Sorry if I, if I got a little, uh, uh, got that wrong. So one of the things we're doing is um, all these really big uh, battles in full physics. So um, the next step Rob's working on is actually differentiating building uh, block types. So for beta one, we're putting in different types of blocks so that you can actually craft different materials to make a different type of block. And then hooking that block up to different visuals for different realms. So right now, I think Rob has a wood and a stone block in there, and we're going to do uh, new materials, which we'll actually talk about uh, how we're doing our materials uh, differently and more prettily. That's a word um, in a moment. Um, so he's working on that. Uh, he's also working on uh, realm-based collision and coming up with a way to get you into your castle so that if you actually build a wall around your castle, you could actually get into it with a door. He just earlier asked me for a door model. Um, we're also working on um, building plot ownership mechanics so that you can actually queue up... Um, some of you may be familiar with the uh, blueprinting system, which allows you to uh, copy and paste whatever is in a volume and uh, create it. So if you wanted to create a wall, you could just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. However, for actual gameplay, we want to actually slow that down and create a system um, that's a little bit more fun. So last week, Corey was working on setting up building plots. So when you put in a cube, uh, or I'm sorry, a blueprint, it would actually um, start to build slowly. And then the more players of your own realm would get inside of your plot, and that would give you uh, a speed boost on how fast your blueprint would build. So now we're starting to get into a little bit more nuts and bolts of that, so that if um, your plot is um, contested, and you've got other players trying to attack on your plot, apparently the uh, flags that we put in there are now going to set on fire. Uh, ben requested something a little bit more visually obvious that your plot was being attacked. Um, and it will actually pause the blueprint uh, process of building, and then we'll figure out if anything was destroyed uh, from the battle, and then start filling in those blocks after uh, everybody's left and you've hopefully saved your plot. Um, let's see, crafting. Crafting, I know you guys are very excited about that. Mark has been heads down on his spreadsheets for most of the week and is at a point where he's handed off most of the information to Mark who has gone through, uh, he's into the third stage of crafting so we are actually populating the world right now with some uh, materials that people will be able to run around and find um, this is not indicative of the final system, this is just something to test the tech we're putting in so you're going to be able to uh, run around, find materials. Uh, right now they're in different boxes, so it'll be like, oh cool, I got a, a pile of raw uh, brass or spider silk. Um, we have a list of a whole bunch of different materials that are getting put in right now, and these will spawn all over the world, so you'll be able to go get them, take them, put them into the box, 
and go through several stages to eventually pop out an axe or a piece of armor. Um, so right now we've been supporting uh, Mark with that with a whole bunch of art. Uh, the next stage, uh, last week we got uh, stats on weapons and we're headed towards stats on armor. So armor will actually mitigate uh, damage and um, give you uh, different stats for uh, combat. So that's really cool. Um, so some of that kind of really feels like it's coming together. Um, uh, last week we uh, updated the patcher. I went ahead and put this up here because we added the uh, Arthurian themed image, which we had not yet. So I apologize to the Arthurians. Please don't kill me. Um, right now JB has moved from the patcher uh, to grouping. So we're, there, apparently there's a lot to do. He's got a very long to-do list of what we have to do for grouping. Um, and I actually had to uh, parse that down to uh, more specific beta one tasks because apparently he had a whole bunch of really fun ideas and things that he wanted to do so be excited by uh, the future mechanics that we're going to keep adding um, let's see buildings realm specific collision um, on the art side uh, we got the valks in we got the lucre pans in we've got the um, picks Picks are the next thing that we're going to put in. Um, the picks had a story, I think, only at this point. So that should be really interesting to see uh, those guys go in. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what uh, John cooks up for them, specifically because he's done some really nice uh, heads and hairs, just really simple things that are really nice. Um, one of the bigger things we've actually done is we've moved to a new lighting system and a new material system, and it's absolutely amazing. And I'm going to pop over to uh, my client here. Um, actually, since I've got this up, this is the first thing you guys are going to see. Uh, this is work in progress uh, on the TDD heavy armor. And one of the things you should note here is the different types of materials. Uh, our new system will actually give us the ability to make different materials look more like their real world properties. So in this case, we have uh, actual metal uh, which behaves differently than anything that is not metal, as simple as that is, and the fabric, and the wood, and then the chest plate. So all of these different things can be different materials. So when you're actually crafting this stuff, you'll have to find these materials and create these uh, things. And then we have a whole bunch of really cool plans that I'm not going to talk about of how we can use our uh, material system uh, later to enforce some of the visuals for crafting. Um, more work in progress of the chest. Uh, and these are actually pretty low res uh, screenshots, actually. Uh, so here's uh, the full shot. Come on, there we go. So this is the work in progress on the TDD armor. Um, program we're using is all physically based rendering. Um, and what I'll do is I'll show you guys a texture of kind of what that means. I think uh, last time in chat I uh, linked you guys a PDF for some of that stuff. But if you look up uh, PDR uh, rendering, online. Uh, you can find tons of information on basically how cool this is. And a lot of a lot of games are starting to... actually that's not true. A few games are starting to move to this. And one of the things we're trying to do is just push our visuals. Um, and I'll show you kind of what that means um, just looking at this rock. Um, so right here what you're looking at is the color channel. Uh, one thing you'll note is there really is no lighting information in it. This is mainly just color that you're looking at. Um, we add in on top of that something you guys have probably heard several times, which is the normal. And this gives you a lot of uh, visual information about the way the light um, renders over the surface of the object that you're looking at. And then we have some new things. Uh, we have roughness. Uh, which is basically, it, it's as simple as using the words roughness and gloss. Uh, something that's very glossy, like my coffee cup, will have a black value in our game, and something that's very rough, like my shirt, is going to have a very white value. So there's a lot more that goes into this that um, part is part artistic and part science. We actually have numbers that we look up for how light uh, interacts with different materials, and we use those in our editor. And... I'll show you what this actually looks like. <coughs> so this is a work in progress of a that rock material in the game. Um, and I've actually got it on a giant rock I'm working on. So if we get up close to this thing, one of the things you can see 
is little points of light that actually hit the rock in different ways. We, ha we have a lighting system now that actually takes pictures, basically, of the entire world every five frames and then uses that information to do color and intensity on the environment around you. So right now my character is actually picking up light from the sky above me, which you can see is blue. So if you look over here on the rock, you can actually see little pops of blue that will show up on the rock. Um, some of these things, this will actually help give us more of a mid-ground. A lot of games nowadays will have just a basic uh, sun and a fill, so you kind of get a zero to one. It's either in shadow or not in shadow. Now we'll actually have uh, shadows, but we'll actually have light within that shadow, and that's the kind of thing where you actually see curves around surfaces. You'll see little pops of light. Um, just getting to this point where you can actually see these little blue pops and things took a little bit of time today just to get the texture just right. Um, the other thing you'll see out in the distance here, and I'll just fly in, is basically a highlight going on here on the grass. We now have two values to determine highlight. Uh, we have the intensity of it and we have the roughness of it. So right now if you look straight down the image you can see where the grass texture kind of has a nice sheen across and it's actually quite wide. So that's how rough it is. If I made it glossier all of that would get uh, much tighter. And then we have a spec map which makes things very hot which is a word for white. So if you look really closely, the work in progress on these grass blades have just a really hot white speck that shows up on them. Uh, this is something that I obviously have to fix, but the cool thing about this is when you've got two materials next to each other, we no longer are basically just looking at specular power, how hot it is, how bright it is. We'll actually see a, a difference in the materials so that they'll look totally different against each other. Um, case in point, if you look at a material that isn't complete, um, right here with the dirt, I'll make this big so you guys can see it. So you can see how this has really got a lot of white in it, and that's basically because I haven't done anything to it yet. Um, what we would want to do is really make this rough because it's dirt and rocks, and then what we would do is put little bits of um, uh, highlights in it to just kind of add some variance. So what would happen is you'll actually feel like you're seeing grass and you'll feel like you're seeing dirt instead of just one or the other. Um, all of that is really exciting and it's a lot of work. Um, we've gone through an updated cube. Um, we've done a first pass on all the cube materials. We're going to start adding in a whole bunch of really cool things. Uh, one of the things we want to do is get some fun stuff in there. So uh, on our next cube push we're going to be looking to get some fun materials um, like really glossy things, uh, maybe some metals uh, in the materials so you'll actually have some fun stuff to play with. Um, uh, we also have Glow. That was um, a bit of work on George's part. So all of this is a big thanks to Andrew and then handing it off to George. And as you can see, I have fancy floating rocks. These are not on purpose, but maybe that maybe we can make them spin and be really fancy floating rocks. Um, let's see. Go back to the patcher here. A couple of other things we've talked about, uh, the board game that Max has been working on. Uh, if you haven't heard about that, uh, we've been working on a depth-based uh, board game that all of us had a lot of fun playing and Max has been putting a lot of effort into. Uh, it's something that has not taken away uh, from the production of the game. It's all after hours work. No money's been put into it. Um, we've basically given Max a cardboard and a few minis to work with and he's managed to produce a really fun game that we've all had a lot of fun playing. Um, Another cool thing that I actually forgot to touch on about buildings, because we're doing um, so much with physics and we have all these little blocks, right? Uh, one of the things that Rob's really excited about is we can do different types of damage. So this came up in a conversation about ballistas. Uh, so I made a ballista model, or I'm sorry, we had a ballista model made by a talented artist who works uh, did some work for us. And uh, Ben wanted a big iron ball sitting in the ballista. And I talked about it with Rob, and he said, you know, let's get another version that has an arrow in it. And what he wants to do is, um, no promises yet at this point, um, but what Rob wants to do is have the ball do a different type of damage, more of an AOE, uh, think a larger shape impacting the wall, versus an arrow, which will have um, a very different damage type and a different shape. So we can actually do more hole punching through the walls instead of the big AOE damage. And that's something that a lot of games 
cannot do. Um, most games will do just a can damage something and that's about it. Now you'll actually have more choices that actually seem to have a physical uh, reaction in the world with these two variations and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Um, lots of stuff going in. Um, I think, am I missing anything? Don't think I'm missing too much. Um, <coughs> like I said, there's a lot going in. Uh, everybody's working hard. Everybody's actually still uh, having a good time and having a little bit of coffee. Uh, uh, actually, it's actually been pretty fun the last few nights. Uh, several of us have honestly just gotten stuck here because we're having a good time talking to each other and problem solving. I think one of the best things that I've always enjoyed about making games is the problem solving. That's honestly what I remember from every project I've worked on. And I think last night I had to make myself go to go home because I was tired. Yeah, Mark's got his uh, big empty coffee cup. But in all honesty, we all, there were several of us the last few nights have just been hanging out and talking and trying to figure out some cool new thing that we could do or how to solve any specific problem. And we actually have um, George here right now with us um, who normally works remotely. And he's been fantastic just to um, riff ideas off of. And I actually... The first day he was here, uh, he and I started thinking about grass, and we went from like, okay, well, what do what do we think we're seeing incorrect? Um, George was really good at finding things, uh, visual errors that hadn't been exposed until we put in the new lighting, uh, because we had much more information being conveyed on the screen, which you guys will see. Um, we started noticing things that just didn't look right. So there were a lot of conversations amongst everybody, kind of like, I don't think that's right. Let's go, you know, let's go check it out. And uh, George actually found several issues that all that were kind of hidden with the old lighting system. And now that we've got the new one, they were all exposed and all fixed, and things look way better. I can actually point out one of the issues. Um, our characters, oh, that's the wrong way. Let's see if I'm still, I'm still stuck in my character. That's not a good view. We'll skip that that show and tell. Um, one of the things was the characters weren't lighting correctly, and that's all been fixed. Um, so yeah, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought there. Um, but everybody's been having a lot of fun. Um, you know, it is hard work. It is its own reward. I, I, you know, I've said to several people, and several people have said to me they appreciate being able to get a lot of work done. And it isn't something we're going to do. You know. For forever, you know, we're trying to make sure everybody's getting fed and taking care of themselves and sending people home. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Very excited about a bunch of new things coming in. Kind of excited about ballistas. Um, like I said, uh, we've talked about ballistas. We'll probably be doing with slash commands to begin with. Um, I'm not sure where Dave is at on that, but we'll be doing a lot of like, you know, drop ballista kind of um, commands and once you drop the ballista then you'll be able to fire it. I think right now he's trying to hook it up with Andrew's work for the archers with the arcing so that you'll actually have some good visual feedback for it. So like we've said and I just want to iterate a lot of this is getting to a point where we can test a lot of the tech that's going in and then we'll start building on a lot of the player facing gameplay, UI, um, you know, VFX. Uh, we're going to keep doing uh, more with lighting. We actually have to get HDR lighting in, which is actually a really cool thing, which I'll explain real quickly. Um, not only will it make things look better in the game without going into too much detail, but um, if you take the example of driving in your car and you go into a tunnel, um, you'll notice that everything seems really dark in the tunnel for a moment, and that's your your iris actually you know opens up and says, okay, well I need a little bit more light to see what I'm doing. And then when you get to the other side of the tunnel and you come back out into the sunlight, your iris closes real quick, but there's that flash of brightness where you suddenly don't see anything for a moment. And uh, one of the things that HDR allows to do is actually to attenuate the color space so that you're actually um, I don't want to. I don't want to misquote George here, but basically, we'll be able to reproduce that. So, going in and out of, say, a cave or under a, a moat or anything like that, where the world darkens and brightens, we'll actually be able to darken the screen up and brighten the screen up to kind of fake that kind of uh, level of realism. So, really excited about that too. Um, George, George gave me the thumbs up. I, I, I basically got it. Uh, he's, he's the tech side. Um, oh, you know what? I actually punted on saying we were working on grass. Um, when he got in, uh, you know, 
Grass is something you probably don't think about in games very much, but you have to remember that the grass takes up a very large portion of what you're seeing on the screen. So getting it right is kind of a key thing. And we, we've kind of done a, a first pass of it, and George and I really sat with the new lighting and tried to figure out little things like, oh, it's getting too dark at the base. What can we do to make the, the grass look like it's curling? Um, how can we match the colors better? Um, there were basically... George came up with more ideas than I could implement in you know the few minutes that I had started to fix things, and uh, then I basically said, "Okay, we got to stop because we basically come up with several days of work that would make the grass look awesome, but we've got a whole lot of other things to do, mainly updating all the materials for the new lighting and material system." So, um, lots of changes still going on. Uh, if you guys want to pick a couple of questions out of this, um, be happy to answer. Please don't ask me all the design questions. That's uh, not, not this type of stream. Um, but anything uh, more about art or how the team's doing? Short circuiting or you had the process for like, I look at this piece of armor, therefore it goes on to this, you know, the state of the structure, and we can put, we can do that. Drop ballista. That's going to be, we need to put that on a t shirt. That'd be awesome, actually. Beta 1, drop ballista. Possible to limit the clipping for grass. Um, not sure what you mean by clipping. Um, in this case, right now, uh, some of the we're uh, we're doing a lot of work on the terrain. Uh, a few weeks ago, George did a whole bunch of optimizations to how we're uh, drawing terrain, and that actually brought our frame rate up significantly. And he says there's a lot of room to grow. So uh, once we get uh, a little bit long, farther along. Um, he's going to be taking another look at that and uh, hopefully getting us a uh, better frame rate and better performance for everybody, uh, particularly on lower end. Uh, can't answer the last one. I'm going to let you wait until a, a, a mark stream for that one. Oh yeah, everybody's going to, we'll definitely make sure the team takes a break uh, once we get into beta, because then obviously we have to refresh and get ready to make all the rest of the game, which we're very excited about. Um, a lot of the animations are going to change once we hook up the animation um, system. Uh, we have all, a bunch of new animations, um, and that will actually help to... Um, show when you're in combat and out of combat so that's and animations are going to change from now till release i guarantee we'll keep tweaking them we'll keep we have new tech that we want to add in um there's a lot of things i'm not want to add in can i moonwalk no i would totally get up and try that but i would just look silly i'm glad you guys are excited like I said, the, the the only thing I'm worried about is just to make sure you guys are aware. This is an actual in-production beta. This isn't a game that has been worked on for the last four years quietly, and then you hear about it, you know, coming from another country, and beta one is basically feature complete, all the art complete, and they're just testing bugs. We're actually in an, ac in a, an actual beta one uh, progress. So you'll be, when we get into beta one, you'll be testing a lot of tech. Um, like I said, slash commands. We'll be worrying about a lot of the player experience after that. And right now we just need you guys to get in, knock shit over, kill each other, uh, run around in the world, give us feedback. And what we'll be doing a lot of uh, looking at is server performance, client performance, just seeing how everything runs. And one of the things, we, like I said, we've been focused on is just making sure that this thing runs for everybody well, uh, to a certain degree. You'll, and uh, make sure it's fun to play on top of that. Uh, in terms of environment work, uh, that remains, I think he's asking, is there still work for uh, beta 1? Yeah. Um, and like right now, if you have access, um, there's a lot of things that are not finished. Uh, we've got really glossy trees, uh, which is not correct. Um, all the materials need an audit. Um, we're going to create some new uh, biomes. Uh, I want to do some, get some new beaches, a lot of new rocks, uh, a lot of new materials, and also hooking up more realm swapping. Um, 
that was one of the things maybe two weeks ago I was talking about with the pine forest and putting in all the new materials. Uh, if you look at any of our updates, you'll see pictures of, I think, purple flowers in the foreground and TDD tr uh, pine trees in the background. So one of the things I'm really excited about is once we get uh, with this new lighting is I can go revisit some of those things and do the uh, updates on the textures. And we should, with the new lighting, you should have a much uh, better feeling of space. Um, I audited the pine forest. If anybody was in the pine forest before and it was just camera collision all over the place, that was never planned to be the final thing. That was just to stress things. Um, so the new version actually creates a lot of space, more gameplay space, little clusters of trees so that you have... Um, it's kind of funny because people would walk by and say, oh, I hate those clusters of trees. Oh, I hate the big open spaces. And it was basically you could tell whether they wanted to play melee or range by which uh, setting of trees they saw. Uh, materials, uh, we will at a later date be looking at uh, making things uh, wet uh, for different weather effects and things like that, but it's certainly not something anytime soon. Um, how many biomes do you guys have planned? Technically, there's going to be a whole pile of biomes. Um, it's kind of, a, it's actually sort of hard to answer simply because the way they're built they can be put together in different combinations. It's one of the strengths of the train editor that you can actually kind of build one section and another section and then cram them together on a, the same map and you actually start getting really interesting things when they meet. So um, right now, um, I don't know, I'm making several different ones, three, four different biomes right now, but then trying to put in all the realm swaps is a lot of extra work. And, and right now, you know, we're small. This this was not, don't go uh, really wide with our art. Once we actually get all the lighting figured out and all the materials figured out and exactly how we want things to look, which should be fairly soon, we can actually go wider and do some outsourcing, get some uh, other art in faster. Oh, the last question there, will trees collapse when they're harvested? Will we have to wait for them to grow back? Um, I don't know that we've exactly settled on a plan for that, partially because there's a lot of tech that needs to happen beforehand. I think things like that are something we would like to do, but it really just matters on engineers and engineering time on other things that are uh, bigger things to do right now. Right now for beta one, it'll be, oh, there's a box of wood, and you'll walk over and pick that up. We, we're really looking for people to test the system and not um, worry about uh, how many trees there are in any one area. Um, will there be an improved camera movement near trees or high objects, or we'd have to zoom in and out? We have a whole lot of ideas of how to deal with uh, trees and um, vision for players, uh, which may have been commented on when we talked about uh, stealth and archery mechanics. So there's a whole lot of really cool stuff that we have planned for that, but uh, not part of beta one. Hmm. All right, I'll take uh, give you guys a couple more minutes, and then I am honestly just going to get back to all these materials that I've got to do, which are actually a lot of fun. Uh, we had a couple of questions just asking about more um, NVIDIA tools that we've talked about in the past. Yes, uh, we are still planning on putting more things in. Um, that's just a matter of time and energy at this point. Um, but we are definitely going to add some cool, cool stuff. I can say that. Uh, I could keep streaming. Um, I'm going to be working on some materials. I don't know how exciting it will be. Uh, indoor lighting versus outdoor lighting will be a thing. Uh, like I said, think of it as wherever you are, we're taking a picture every five frames. So if you're inside, the lighting will change to look like the lighting where you are inside. And when you step outside, the cool thing is, is if uh, I think one of our updates had it, if you're like inside and there's a doorway or something to the side, you'll actually be getting lighting information over here. So this side of your character will be lit differently than this side of your character. This isn't something we've had in there before. Basically, you were either in the light or in the shadow. Okay, I am going to stop talking and I am going to 
go back to art land. Um, I can go ahead and keep the stream up for a little bit longer. Um, and you guys can see me work on that giant rock that I'm working on and uh, all the grass and all the materials. All right. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks for checking in. Um, I will make sure and have a whole nother list of really cool things next time. Promise. Yeah, Tyler's not very good at stopping talking. That's true. All right. Thank you guys very much. Uh, please stay tuned. We're going to keep streaming throughout the week and into next week. And we are going to keep doing our best to make a really cool game for you guys to play. And a, right now, as you can see, a really pretty game. So, uh, signing off. Oh, actually, I'm going to stop talking.